Wowie, wow, 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 wow. Can you believe it? The Los Angeles Lakers won a basketball game with only four guys on the floor. Here to talk with me about one of the soggiest basketball games of all time, an internet champion, Miles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing all right, man. Thanks for doing this, brother. No problem. Okay. Is there is there any chance you remember this game or this team or, or any of it? <laughs> I was I was doing a lot of drugs back then. So hey, that's um, real. <laughs> pieces. Yeah. Yeah. I, I vaguely remember this because uh when you got to the part about I think it was Chris Kamen lying yeah. down on the bench, that's the part that is still bouncing around in the back of my skull there. <laughs> You can't shake it. That's what you was doing the drugs for. You can't forget that. Partially, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that was that was a shitty time to be a basketball fan. Jesus Christ, I, dog! I was looking at LA's roster. There's no way you could name all the people on this roster. If you could name, if you could name eight dudes on this roster, I will pay your rent right now. I got your rent tab number right now. <laughs> okay, let me try. Um, there was Sakura, right? Okay, one. Chris Kamen. Yeah. Nick Young. Jordan uh-huh. Farmar. Right. What year is this? 2012? 2013. 13, 14. 13. Oh, it's Steve Nash. Yeah. Had Dwight a triple double in this game. Dwight not there this year. Dwight already gone. Oh, Kobe then. Yeah, yeah. Kobe sitting on a, um, on a bench. How many is that? That's six. Oh, okay. Okay. We're close to <laughs> Um, Was Sasha still there? Negative. Luke Walton. Negativo. Ooh, okay, okay. It's getting thin now. Getting I said Nick Young, right? Yes. Um. All right, I'm gonna tap out. I'm just wasting the time. At this point. Well, honestly, thank you. Because if I had to pay your rent, that would have fucked up my books <laughs> for this month. And because I'm a man of my word, and I would have did that shit. But yeah, that would have that would have fucked up a few lunches for me. It helped me out though. I'd That's true. I um I want to take a moment to just appreciate Steve Blake for the maniac that he was. Had a, his first triple double in this game, and also socked multiple teammates of his in the face. Not in this game. I just respect that he did that. <laughs> he always had some go. He was uh he was becoming a stereotype in a sort of that way. But, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, what is it like? Imagine being a white point guard. Is that what it's like? Like. Do you walk into that with like a jail mentality where like, you know what, I just got to punch somebody to let everybody know that I'm not fucking playing? Well, where is he from? Because I think he went to Maryland, right? I think he's a Maryland cat. If he's from Maryland, then yeah, he's a stereotype. But I I forget (laughs) the Steve Blake story, so I don't want to overstep here. We're doing that next week. (laughs) Uh, That Lakers team... One of the more disappointing teams. Are you a Lakers fan at all? You're you're a Portland guy, so. Um, I was a Kobe fan, so I was a Laker fan. But okay. when it ended, so did that. That's fair, because that I remember I wasn't a Kobe fan, and I remember seeing Dwight and Steve Nash and them on that Sports <laughs> Illustrated cover, and like <laughs> it had me fucked up. It had me fucked up, but then I felt worse when it fell apart. I I don't know. I mean, that, that was just such an interesting time looking back because if you had that team with the way that we play now, how different would it have been? Damn, true. They got a bunch of shooters. I mean, Steve Nash and Kobe Bryant with a spread floor encouraging people to shoot threes. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Dwight Howard is still a problem, though. So I mean, he's gone. Does, that's, right, that's right. It depends on his back entirely. At what In this uh, alternate universe, where is his spine at the time? You mean like physically or metaphorically? Yeah. I mean, I guess either way. Okay. Well, then I got two different answers for you. <laughs> give, me, give me the metaphorical one. I like that. I mean, wasn't that the problem? You know, the yeah. the whole button heads between him and Kobe. And <laughs> Kobe wanted him to be something that he wasn't until now, apparently. But uh, yeah, yeah. I just think about Kobe Bryant, you know, a lot in the modern era. And I think that the numbers and some of the things that he was doing around that time period would be a good precursor to uh, 
how that look. That's fair. I, um, I, you know, the end of Kobe's career is always, it brings up a lot of feelings for me. I personally feel like the Lakers have to be good. Like, just, like no matter what my feelings are, if the Lakers are bad, like things aren't fully right. And I know there's th- this year mm-hmm. being the exception because like life stopped. They got the one seed and then uh, now we can't go nowhere. But other than that, you know, like, yeah, now they're holding you hostage. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been watching basketball since shit like 1980 something. And the Lakers have always been good, except, you know, like a slight dip in the 90s. And then they rode it all the way to, what, 2010. They got knocked out by Dallas, 2011. And then that was the start of the cratering that they're just coming out of. But yeah, yeah, that that was a weird time that the Lakers were not a marquee franchise. Yeah, and the one constant, Kurt fucking Rambus. Kurt Rambis there for the entire God, I can't wait. I might start reading books if Kurt Rambis write a book. His book is the first thing on my list. Well, he took some time off to fuck up the Timberwolves, too. So <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it, was, uh, it was some equal opportunity and confidence there. He came back and D'Antoni is the coach. God, D'Antoni, one of the worst D'Antoni years. I uh, His opinion... I, never has a man's opinion changed more in my mind than Mike D'Antoni. Cause I, at this point I'm like, Oh, this dude couldn't coach his way out of a, a fucking nice handbag. You know what I'm saying? But you mean like, right now or back then, back then, but now it's okay, like, okay. Oh shit. He's a fucking basketball scientist. He got the whole shit mapped out. Very impressive return. If they had a uh, most improved coach awards, yeah. Miguel D'Antoni. <laughs> also, I like that mm-hmm. he coaches the way I order a sandwich at the, you know, with like, he's just always like touching his mask. Have you watched D'Antoni this season? He's got a mask on because he's kind of old and he's scared. Oh, you mean since uh, we playing Rona ball here? Yeah, this is Rona, Rona Tony. Oh, no, no, I haven't paid too much attention to him. I did watch a couple Rockets games, so. Oh, Rona Tony is hilarious because he just he's always <laughs> touching that mask. And he like he was he was like refing it, he's like yelling at the ref, but he, and he's like pulling at the mask. And I'm like, that is exactly the same thing I did at Wawa today when I was getting my little uh, hoagie on. He seems like his breath gets hot. And maybe it's, you know, just he's he's gotta let it out, but he's trying to set a good example at the same time, so it's very frustrating. And in the game he's very frustrating. So he's tugging at the mask. It could be an O C D thing too. So that's fair. I, I try and give him some grace on that, you know? No, that's fair. That's fair of you to give Dan Tony some bail. Uh, okay. Here's a real, here's a real bet. Here's the, this is the real one. This is the real one. Okay. Okay. If you can, if you can name, if you can name nine dudes on the Cavs roster, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll finish. I'll pay off your student loan. If I can name nine Cavs in 2012, then I, I should be working for the fucking Cavs. Yeah, right. you should be a Cav. You should be a Cavalier in a suit with a sword. Um, was Kyrie there? Yes. Dion Waiters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ding, 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 ding. This team is insane. Was Verjao still there? Verjao, absolutely. Okay. Verjao was getting cooked this entire game we talking about. Um, who else? Damn, we, you know, it, it just, it kills you in times like this. I'll give you a hint. It, the, t- the roster is basically all guards. Like, they only have, like... <laughs> <laughs> Deli? Deli's in there. Okay. Um, Young, developing Deli. So what? Dion, Deli, Marie, Verjao. Um, oh, guards. Who else would be on that team? Was Booby still there? Nah, he ain't there. But yeah, Boobs is out. Yeah. I'm dry. I got nothing for you. Once again, thank you for uh, saving my checkbook. Because, um, yeah, I defaulted on those, so that one would have hurt you. Was, oh, my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, man. They'd have put you in jail on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to fake my death twice. Oh, no. I don't need that. 
most hilarious member of this roster, Andrew Bynum, got a check off the Cavs that season. Oh, wow. It's like, was that his last year? Or was Philly? Uh, not Philly for sure, because he had the um, Ike Turner. He had the press. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, that yeah. is the last image of Andrew Bynum in my head. I don't think we've seen him again since then. Have no, no. His hair hasn't grown an inch since either. <laughs> He's got the exact same fro. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sure he spent his money well, though. And do you think it, like, being on a bad team, you know that hypothetical where, like, your friends be like, would you play on a bad team? Like you're in the NBA, but you're you start on the worst team. Like, do you think that should like would fuck with your mind for real? Do you think you could handle uh, being on a crappy team? Am I good? Or no? You're good. You're a starter. You're a like, you're a like legit good though. Like all star good, or I just start for the shitty team good. You're you know what? You're all star reserve good. You're okay. all star reserve good. You're like twenty and ten. So I'm I'm gonna max out. Yeah. You max me out and you put me in Indiana, Cleveland, Minnesota, OKC. I'm good. Yeah, that's real. I'm good because you pay. You're an all-star. You get all the perks of that. You live in somewhere where life is cheaper. You're saving your money. You definitely run that town. And if you don't want to, you can lay in the cut. And nobody bothers you. Yeah, that's true. You get an acres. It's you're not a bad deal. Except getting, for that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're three quarters of the year, you're taking L's. But the rest of the year, I'm in California, I'm in Florida, I'm wherever I want to be, spinning that max contract. That's facts. I'm working on my um working on my Maserati uh, uh model kit. I make I do model or cars. Maybe I just become like Midwest Magic Johnson, you know? Uh, oh my god! Movie theaters. I'm selling you all kinds of shit. I just take the whole shit over. And drive throughs is winning right now. You make a you start a drive in movie right now with some Boom. max money. Boom! Psh. Rick Ross doing that. Guaranteed. Kidding? I'm going to Miles Brown theaters right now. Exactly. See, uh, King of the Midwest. Dog, being the King of the Midwest does sound scary though, because then you know you would have to deal with like <laughs> you would eventually have to see the meth kingpin. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe not for business, out. but you see him at a party, you know, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, do I have to talk to meth man? I mean, I mean that's why I, always, I definitely wanted to include the lay in the cut option because <laughs> you only need like, you know, a small ro- rotation of good friends and, and pretty people. And then it's just like, yeah, don't bother me. I, I don't want to hang out with the unwashed masses if I don't have to. That's facts. Right. And- Sometimes you just got to roll the dice. See if you meet a meth head. Might be a story in it. That could be a story. Once again, if you're right, when you, when we when Kurt Rambis's book comes out, <laughs> it is going to be filled <laughs> with tales of methamphetamines, I I hope. Kevin McHale looked like he got it in. Just, you know, <laughs> he, he might have had a night one time. Yeah. He got sick of, you know, drinking that, that Coors Light with Larry Bird. He was like, hey, you know, pass me that. <laughs> let, let, let's see what happens here. One, two, yeah, you know he did. You know he got. Uh, yeah, Mikhail probably hit dust. Too. He probably he's a PCP guy. He seems like he get wet. Yeah, he Mikhail, Kevin Mikhail got wet. Definitely. I'm not saying like consistently. I don't want to slander the man's good yeah, name. Not at but all. But he's I, I post- think he experimented. You know. Yeah, Austin in the eighties. Bill Walton was on that team. Hey. Who else was on that team? I know did drugs. Um, Chief was on that team. Chief smoked hella weed. Yo, yeah, Chief, yeah, his yeah, his lips is certainly blunted. He used to smoke yes. fucking Philly. A writ- no flavor Phillies. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I could see how him looking at them, you know, them being the free spirits and legends they were. And then one night you're at the party, somebody passes the blue pipe, and you're just like, oh yeah, fuck it. You know what? Let's see what happens. We beat Atlanta again. Right. We got the hey, we got man, home we got court locked off. up. We, got- we playing Cleveland. Yeah, pass me that. I smoke that shit. Let's see what if, happens. If I got home court locked up, yeah, I'm liable to try anything. I'm a, I'm a scientist. I'm just. Sometimes you just gotta be in it for the story, man. 
Uh, the the thoughts and views on this podcast are uh, mine and mine alone. I don't want anybody to catch any. I should definitely get the lawsuit from Kevin McHale for uh, saying he. Uh, I love Kevin McHale. Did some Ashy Larry shit one time. I love him too. That's you know uh, what it's be- he's it's a like Minnesota legend. The same he's an NBA reason I. Legend. Love him. But you a Minnesota cat on the low? Yeah, yeah. I lived there for about uh ten years in my life. Oh shit! Yeah, a lot of a lot of good times, a lot of bad basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty maso menos in the end. Hey, you know you win some, you lose some. What's the be- What's the most underrated thing about Minnesota? Just wonder. I've never been. <laughs> the summer and the spring, like people always, you know, picture like, oh, you, you in the north, you know, like they sent you to fucking Night's Watch or something, and it's like, yeah, it is like that from. I don't know, November to March, but in spring, summer, when the lakes open up, sun yeah, starts shining down. Yeah. yeah. Good time. Okay. We like vibes. Yes, man. You, you, you can shoot a video out on the lakes. Pretend you're rich. It's a vibe. Uh, you know, you know who else? You know who else likes lakes? Uh, uh, who else? I'm trying to look. Marshawn Brooks. Uh, that's a name you missed. On the on the Lakers, Ross. I don't know. That was a terrible Marshall attempt. Marshawn Brooks. Mer- a terrible <laughs> attempt mean, at a segue. <laughs> when when you mention uh, Lakes and Lakers, I- I'm thinking of uh, what was his name? Cedric Sabalos. One okay. two three Cancun. You don't remember that? No. Nah, what's the one two three Cancuns? Um, Cedric Sabalos was. This was one of that that uh, that Lakers downturn. You know when they were mm-hmm. shitty. Like right after Magic Dip, before Kobe and Shaq got there, it was just Nick, uh, Eddie Jones, Cedric Sabalo, some randoms. Eldon and, Campbell? Yeah. And I, I forget the exact details because I'm old and again, too many drugs. But um, sure. Cedric Sabalos, I think, missed a game or missed a practice or something. And they caught the nigga out like on camera in, on, a, on a jet ski. <laughs> and. Then I think one, two, three Cancun was a reference to like how they were ending the group huddles during games. Like, yeah, we just want to get out of here. Just, just give me my check. You know, I, my, my girl is waiting in the car. One, two, three Cancun. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yo, can you imagine getting caught on some shit in a world before the internet? Wow. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, before the internet, I, I would shake, I would eat that, you know? Like, yeah, I had a good day at the beach, you know? I met a nice new girl. We going out to dinner tonight. You niggas going to talk about me for like, you know, four to eight hours, and then you're going to forget about it because there's no yeah. internet. Yeah. Yeah, That's shit, I do that all the time. They might kick me out the league if there was no internet. <laughs> <laughs> the internet. So I, I like this. I like this theory. The internet is the only thing holding this thing together. It is. People hold you accountable now. And, oh. you know, what you could have got away with before, now they clowning in your pocket. All day, every time you open your phone, you're a dickhead. It's not worth it, bro. I know, man. I wake up, and yeah, it's it's terrible to know that you suck. When I wake up and I look at my phone, somebody's like, "Hey, you suck, man." I'm like, "Damn, I I ain't even brush my teeth yet." I'm. It's like it's like seven thirty in the morning. Like I have that healthy self loathing, where you know I tell myself I suck. Yeah, but yeah, you, you know everybody else is telling you that's extra. Un- yeah, it, like guys, I got it. Yeah, it's like nah, I, nigga, you don't know how much you suck. Let me like, remind you. Let me show you. Yeah, you thought four, of this? Yeah, here's some gifts to uh, show you how <laughs> trash you are. So yeah, I mean, internet. I'll keep you honest. Okay. Final thought. Uh, give me what's you? Are you are you a gift head? Are you aware of any? Are there any gifts you have? Any go to gifts? Or maybe like, are are you a gift guy or an emoji guy? Uh I mean, if I had to choose between two, I, I say emojis just because I text more than, you know, I'm showing people gifts or anything. Yeah, sure, sure. Because I, I, I won't be like, you know, what, give me a emoji or a gift to describe the 2013, 2014 Lakers. What would you, if you um, could describe them in one <laughs> internet stroke of the key? 2013, 14 Lakers. One of the worst um, teams of all time. Shouts out to Kendall Marshall, one of the best yeah. basketball players in Woodbridge history. Was His only curse was that he cared too much, and he was also very slow. I'm trying to think, when did it get better? Like, it didn't get better until 
semi last year, right? Kind of. It's and consistently. Last year wasn't good. It wasn't even that good. It was just right. a weird. The train so, was just. Because I'm looking for if you want like the hopeful emoji that indicates, oh, well, the suck is almost over, or it's like, nah, you got six more years of suck in front of you. Yeah, I want the real. Um, I want that the old lady at the end of Game of Thrones season one. Remember the pilot? Yeah, when she, yeah, when she took the, the necklace off. And yeah, then yeah, she turned she, yeah, into the bottom yeah, of your foot when you get out of the bathtub. Yeah. Yes, that one. Um, it would probably be be a, you know, the woozy emoji where you look drunk. Oh whatever. yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That one because it's just setting in. Like, oh, we suck now, and there's there's no end in sight. Like that was around when they were going after Lamarcus Aldridge, right? Yep, the Los Angeles Lakers. <sighs> like, yeah, that's that's what I would feel right then. It's just <laughs> whatever you call that shit. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my final answer. Fully compromised. Uh, mine for reference would be um, the uh, fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> like, anyway, you guys suck and these are facts? Yeah, or? here's the facts. Yeah, facts. Okay, okay, gotcha. it, it would be a full sentence. Y'all are trash, fax machine. Oh, well, you didn't give me the well, option to you know, use see, it as punctuation. I was see, cheating. I might have gone with something different. Yeah, see, that was me totally cheating because okay, I yes, forgot. You I, you yeah, that, that. once again, I forgot that there was no stakes, though. There's <laughs> nothing like I, you know, I was just feeling insecure because you almost took all of my money twice. And I was like, you know what? I got to get one win before I get up out of here. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of myself for remembering as much as I did. I still didn't do that well, though. Hey, you know what? In the terms of history, I'm going to say you nailed it because I don't right. remember this, you know? All right. Just feel like a winner. And on that note, podcast champion miles brown ladies and gentlemen thank you thank you thanks for coming on man